Hi, welcome to Live Photo Life, where we talk about photos and all kinds of wonderful things. My name is Casey. My passion is photos, videos, making prints, travel, nature, people, and the world. I'm your host today, and I hope you enjoy our video. Hi, today the topic we're going to talk about is whether or not low-cost cameras can make great photos and make great prints. Now, this is a question I get asked very often, and it's also a slightly controversial question because a lot of people have different opinions on this, but today I'll share with you my opinion on it, so stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. So the question is whether or not low-cost cameras can take great photos and make great prints. Now, my opinion on this is that any camera that's made within the last five years can definitely make take great photos and these photos will allow you to make great prints i'm talking about cameras that are low cost from maybe 200 us dollars up obviously up to high and expensive cameras would be fine cameras such as compact point and shoot cameras slightly bigger um, amateurish cameras obviously uh, phone cameras phone cameras have come a long way honestly they take fantastic photos for any occasion and if you're talking about more expensive SLRs uh, whether or not it's mirror mirrorless obviously they are great so my opinion on this even um, pads like iPads or Android pads all of them take great photos these days and all of them you can use obviously you can use on websites such as your Facebook Instagram and those things those don't require a lot of resolution but also to make to share in high resolution or even to make prints big prints like this it's definitely no problems so today I want to show you a low-cost camera that is called a Canon 540HS that I've used uh, for a few years now. It is a low cost, cost is around, when I bought it, it was slightly less than 250 US dollars. It is, I mean, this is, you couldn't even buy any kind of cell phone for this price nowadays. Uh, I've had it for three or four years now. It is an absolutely fantastic camera. It's compact. It's, it's super zoom, so it has a 50 times optical zoom, so basically it gives me a range on a, at its, as a 24 millimeter wide at its widest up to 1,200 millimeter, meters, 1,200 millimeters at its widest, so it's at its longest, sorry. So it's actually a super zoom camera, which I love it because the range gives me a lot of room to take any photos I want. Uh, it could be close, it could be far, it could be wide. It's also very lightweight. It's all plastic, but I kind of like it. It's all plastic. It's super light. Um, I'll show you how this super zoom works. Just open it and it, it just zooms out. If you zoom out, it just sticks out and that's 50x and then you can zoom back in and it's really good. It doesn't have any viewfinder. It has a, it has a screen on the back. The screen resolution is not great, but it's good enough. Um, it also takes video, so in case I need to take some video, it's fine. Um, there is a flash. It's it's just simple and manual. You just you just pop it up with your hand and you need it. It's very simple. But anyway, today we're not talking about gear. It's not a gear review. I'm just talking about this camera that I often bring on a trip with me. I bring this low cost camera number one because it's low cost, um, and I don't worry about it being dropped or banged up because you know worst case the loss is not that big, but it's been to quite a few places and it's still fine it still works perfectly the photos it takes it's really nice I really like it and I love the range that it gives me so I want to share some photos with you that I've taken with this low cost 250 US dollars low cost camera that I will show you that you really don't need a very expensive camera to create photos and please don't let having not having like great gear or high-end gear discourage you from going out to take photos because you really don't need it unless obviously you're professional and you're shooting a wedding and you can't mess up everything has to be right because you're being paid of course but I'm just talking about if you're an enthusiast 
like me. Just any camera you have these days, as I say, made in the past five years or so, it will be great and you can take amazing photos. Hi, so today I want to show you a bunch of photos that I've taken with my trusty old low-cost Canon camera. Oh, sorry, forgot to mention before, this camera has a resolution of 20.3 megapixels, which in my opinion is more than enough, it's definitely enough, and for, for most purposes, including making big prints like this. And from these photos, you can judge for yourself whether or not these low-cost cameras can, can take great photos. I think they do. Uh, the photos I'm showing you today are completely unedited, they're, so they're straight out of the camera. There's no Lightrooming or Photoshopping, and then you can judge for yourself whether or not these photos are good enough. Now, I'm also putting a link to the full resolution versions of these photos in the description below, so please, you can download these photos and really look at them, pixel peep or whatever, and judge for yourself, make prints with them, and see if you what you think about them. Again, there's no Lightrooming or editing and these photos are straight out of camera. So let's go. So the first photo I would like to show you is a photo of the giraffe I took on the trip at the zoo. Now this photo, as I recall, it's fully zoomed in. So this is a 50 times zoomed in photo. Um, so let me just show you the details of the photo. You can clearly see the eye, the eyelashes, I think it's really great and although plus the focus is great the background some people not particularly me are very fussy about the bokeh so the bokeh because it's zoomed in so much it looks really creamy looks really nice the focus is really good clearly see the nose the eyes really got the eyes really nice and so I think this image is fantastic. Again, you can download these in the description below. Let's take another look. Let's look at another photo. This photo, I, I think it's also I think it's really nice of the giraffe. Again, this is just taken at zoo. This is not some super expensive African safari. This is just at the zoo. This photo is zoomed in. Let me just I forgot how much I see I see from the the system. It's zoomed in again. 215 millimeters. 215 millimeters in this camera is full zoom. It's 50x, 50 times. So look at this photo. I really, really love it. Look at look at this eye. It's perfectly clear. Look at this. It's sharp. It's nice. Um, the background is nicely blurred out. So actually, it doesn't look like a zoom. I actually love this photo. I like this photo so much that I actually made a about an 18 inch wide print of this and I've hung this photo at home. It's, I really like this photo, with, again with no editing. So this is again the giraffe photo, it's really great. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Uh, let's take a look at this meerkat. So I took a photo of this meerkat. Oh, look at this guy, look at him. He's so nice, look at the details. Sharp, again, this low cost camera focuses really fast, does a really great job, and it's really fantastic. Look at the eye, you can see all the whiskers, the hair, it's super good. And let's see how much, and also, you know, some people are really into bokeh, me not so much, but if you do want a blurry background like this with these super zoom cameras, all you need to do is zoom in a little bit and then you get these really beautiful creamy backgrounds like this, super nice. Look at this guy, he's so cute. Okay, so let's show another photo of the rhino. Look at this rhino. Wow, look at him. Look at the detail, you see his mouth, detail in his mouth. Look at that, all the, how do you say, all the wrinkles on the skin. Super, super nice photo of the rhino. Let's see this one. This one is also, this not zoomed in quite a bit, not as much, not super zoomed, maybe around quarter, third, but still really nice photo. I really like this one. And I want to show you a photo, so, ah, this baby rhino one is also super nice. Look at it. 
He's so cute. I think this is great. You can easily blow this up photo into a really nice photo. Get the mom right next to the baby rhino. And the next ones I want to show you is the photo I took of the tiger, also at the zoo. Look at sharp eye, all the hairs, nose. This is a fantastic photo, again with this low cost camera. This one is zoomed in all the way, 50 times zoomed, and it just we were looking at this camp tiger, it's a little bit far away, it was like a show, and he was behind some glass, and it just looks fantastic. I'll show you another lion photo, that tiger photo I really like. This one, I really love it. The eye is nice and sharp. The, the whiskers are all there. He's like, he's in a great position, because this is probably zoomed in a lot as well. Yeah, this is about half, more than half zoom. Uh, the background's all blurred out. It's a really fantastic photo. Again, I would love to blow this up if I have more wall space to put the photos like this. And here we are, a photo of the duck, which I really like. <laughs> this is a duck photo. Look at him. He is so cute. Look at the focus. is tack sharp. Fantastic. Uh, look at his nose, his beak. Really nice photo, and I just another photo of a duck. Look at the feathers, really good. Look at it, look at it. Look at it. Uh, the head's a little blurry, that's motion blur. Uh, it's not really the focus issue, but I still love it. All the details of the feathers. Okay, so that's a bunch of animal photos I've shown you. Uh, another some another photos I want to show you are some street photography photos I took while I was in the city on my trip. So with the super zoom camera, street photography is actually quite easy because you can really step back from your subject. They don't even know you're taking a photo of them. So it's actually quite good. Um, this is a photo of a girl walking. Again, it's quite nice street photography. And here is Photo, another street photography photo of this man. He's look at me, or maybe not. He's look at something, and it also looks good, easy to do with this camera. Uh, here's another. Oh, this guy, street photography, really nice and sharp details. Really nice. You can clearly read what's on his sign. Do you something? I'm stressed and on the streets asking for help and again great photo also I took some photos of buildings while I was in the city and I zoomed in quite a lot to take some details of the molding of these buildings so look just for the example this photo is zoomed in a little bit and so you can see I wanted to take a close-up shot of these moldings, these beautiful moldings on the side of the building and you can see they're all sharp, they're all detailed, they're all really nice, really great. I actually like it very much. Another one is like this one. See the details of the molding, see the crack on the building, it's really good. Here's another one, all the details, super good. Yeah, let's see how much this is zoomed in. Zoom in 70 in this camera is about a third of the zoom. Still really, really nice details of this. Really like these. Now, and I also want to show you landscapes that I took in the city. So this is a landscape photo I took of the city. And it wasn't a clear day, so it's a little cloudy. You can see it's a little gray. Again, these, this slightly dark stuff, we can always Photoshop our Lightroom in and make it look a lot better. And I just want to show you with this little low-end camera. You can see, really, you can see the details in the, in, in the landscape photo. You can see the car, you can see each individual car. You can 
see solar panels. This is again, this is very far away. You can see the boat on the on the river. It's it's really really good. I'll show you another one here. Look at this. This is another landscape. It's, a, it's an actually big landscape photo. Very very covering lots of area, and you can definitely blow this photo up into. 30, 36, maybe even 48 inches across, it would still look great. I just want to show you this in this low cost camera. Look at this detail here. I think there's a, yeah, that's right, there's a little astronaut sitting on top of the roof of the Science Museum. This, even this little astronaut is quite clear. All these buses and cars, they're very, very far away. If you look at it, this is the little area I zoomed into. And you can see it, no problem at all. Can definitely see it no problem at all so again these do you really need a high-end camera before you can go out and shoot no low-cost camera definitely shoot great photo these days again don't let any don't let gear discourage you from going out and taking great photos um, we also visited the amusement park the, the theme park so here are some photos I took at the theme park Here's one of the, the machines they had there, rides they had there. It's really nice, detailed. This is the photo of a Batmobile I took. This is brighter, so look at this. Details are so sharp with, with more light. Details are so sharp, so nice. This is fantastic, I love this photo. I love this Batmobile design as well. Here's a photo I took of a lady of an act one of the actresses as Catwoman in the theme park. Super nice. This one's slightly blurry. The reason is she was moving, it's more motion blur than the camera not capturing the focus. But it's super nice. I really like it. It's really good. Um, I want to show you again the, the, the strength of this camera. This is a photo of this is this shows where I'm standing. Um, in the car park of the theme park. This is a roller coaster ride, obviously, and on top of the roller coaster ride, there's this Joker kind of like a neon thing. So I'm standing very far away at the, in the car park from this Joker sign. Uh, I don't know, several hundred meters. And this is obviously end of the day where the sun is going down, and it's you know the light light is very low and. I'm standing here and this is probably wide open 24 and then I also took a photo of that Joker neon sign at full zoom so this is again low light Joker sign full zoom look at this detail you can see actually individual LED lights that make up this Joker sign unbelievable so you tell me do you really need a really expensive high-end the latest model camera to take wonderful photos. No, my opinion is definitely no. Go out, take whatever you have, your phone, your iPad, your point and shoot, go out, be creative, take great photos, look at this. This is fantastic, okay? The last few photos I wanna show you are some landscape photos I took with this low cost camera. And here it is again, this is, um, these were taken in, in sundown, so it's low light. This is uh, on a boat, on an ocean. You can see the light, the effect is great. The lighting is nice. Um, you can see a little tiny sailboat on the horizon. It's a really beautiful photo, simple, just taken with this camera. This is the same photo, same same location, same, same photo, but a little bit more zoomed in see the sailboat a little bit clearer again low light you can clearly see the two sails of the sailboat it's it's amazing it's amazing the light the light the color is great again if you want you can do a little bit photoshopping light rooming to bring out the colors or the, or the contrast even more it is absolutely fantastic this is a oh sorry if I, want to, I want to show you one more where I actually zoom in the, more onto this um, to that, that sailboat you see on the horizon. Again, you can see it. It's more zoomed in. It's very, very nice. Look at this photo. Again, this photo, you can 
blow it up, put it on your wall, it looks great. Again, when you blow up something to print, you're not looking at it from 10 centimeters away, five centimeter rays. When you have a large print, you stand back three or four feet at least the way you view it, and it still looks great. Even you don't need a ton of pixels to make great prints. This is really nice. Um, here's a landscape photo taken with the same, my trusty old low cost super zoom camera. This is daytime the details of it, the look of it. It's super nice. I, I love it, the colors and everything. So, there you go. Some examples, and again, you can download all these photos in, in the link in the description below of what you can do with the low cost camera. Again, I believe you don't need a super high end, super what you call these, these days, um, mirrorless, high end, the latest model camera to take great photos. All you need is something like my old trusty super zoom, 250 US dollar, what is this, three or four year old camera, Canon camera, and then you can do a great job. I hope what I'm telling you today is helpful and I hope something that can encourage you to go out and shoot more and again thank you for watching i hope to see you more and if you like our video please subscribe and give us a like or if you have any opinions on this please tell us in the, in the comment section below again thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time